Good afternoon. What brings you to see me today? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. um, I, I don't need exact specifics, uh, but general. Mm -hmm. How many times a day? Uh, where does it hurt? Mm. I've been uh, I've been hearing of this quite a bit lately. Um, so. Honestly, not so surprised. You're not the first person to come in here with that complaint, which doesn't make it any better. Maybe, maybe it makes you feel slightly better to know that you're not alone, but you know, and misery loves company, etc. But, uh, I think what misery would really prefer would be to just not be miserable anymore. How long have you felt this way? Do you mind if I, let me. Continue talking, I wanted to do some assaultation. Well, so, um, although, like I said, I've heard and I have other patients with these symptoms, um, the causes are not always going to be the same from patient to patient. So I don't want to just jump to the conclusion that what patient X had is what you have, um, et cetera. So, if you don't mind, uh, I'd like to take a listen to your heart and, you know, go through the, uh, the typical uh, list of things one does in a doctor's office when they're having a physical. Hmm. Can I get, take a deep breath, please? Exhale and hold it, please. Okay. Another deep breath in and out, please. Hmm. And again. One more, one more, just one. Very good. Oh, nothing of consequence there. Um, slightly elevated, but uh, we call that doctor's office, anxiety tachycardia. Um, just relax for one moment and, and listen to this if you could.
try to be as relaxed as possible. We find sometimes that when patients come into the doctor's office and they're uh, in a heightened state of anxiety because who wants to go to a doctor's office? Heck, I don't even want to be here. So we find that uh, we get a more accurate set of results if we are able to get the patient in a more relaxed state before taking any sort of baseline measurements. your eyes for one moment. Thank you. Do you want any hand sanitizer? Not yet. Okay. Try this again. Okay. Deep breath in and out. And again. and deep breath and, and hold it if you could. And let it out. One more deep breath, hold it if you can. Capital. Difference of about a 10 beat per minute in your resting heart rate. So uh, that's about what we account for usually, anyway. But it's, of course, good to know that that's the, the case. Can I get you anything to drink? No. All right. Let's see. What we have here in my little bag of tricks. any sort of, um, did you start up any new activity or anything that might be stressful in your life when you notice the symptoms starting? Any changes in your routine? How are you sleeping? Me? All right, just fine. Thank you. All right, I'm going to swab your ears, if that's okay with you. I don't have to go deep. I'm just going to be in the outer part of the ear. So, uh, if you could just turn your head over this way. 
project just follow my eyes This way, thank you. Do the other ear. It tickles a bit. This is a, the cells I'm collecting here are not visible to the naked eye. Your ears appear quite clean. No worries on that front. Okay, thank you very much. And do a kind of typical reflex knee jerk that was my knee but you get the picture okay just kind of let your legs hang loosely if you can okay Just relax the leg, just kind of let it hang. There we go. Now that you've passed the reflex test, I feel like I can safely tell you without uh, causing you any undue, undue anxiety that uh, were you to have no reflexes in your knee that actually can point to a Pretty serious condition, so I'm glad that we ruled that out. I'm also gonna uh, take a quick look in your ears, if that's all right. I realize I just swabs them, but this will kind of see a little deeper. I won't have to collect anything, don't worry. I'm, I, well, I reserve the right. <laughs> to collect something if I need to, but I don't think I will need to. Okay. If you could just kind of look straight at me. I'm going to be getting kind of close. And actually, if you could look straight ahead, that'd be great. Just look straight right here. Perfect. Strange living in there. <laughs> uh, not that I would expect it. Let me move you out of the way a bit. Get your other ear. Just continue looking forward. Thank you. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. Hygiene. Better than mine. It's not really saying that much. Probably not something you want to hear from your doctor, but uh, truth is the truth. Okay. Looks good. Looks 
perfect. I would say um, 10 out of 10 would look in the ears again. <laughs> All right, so let me take a couple of notes if you don't mind before we move on any further. Oh, you laugh, but you'll need reading glasses someday too. I've completely forgotten to take your weight. Uh, we can remedy that immediately if you care to just uh, step over here and we'll, we'll get your weight. Uh, Really hasn't changed too much one way or the other, but either way, that'll be fine. If you could just come over here for a moment. Thank you. Okay, excellent. So, uh, according to my records, you've gained about 15 pounds since you last visited. Is that uh, unexpected? Are you on any kind of new or, or different diet? No, nothing. Okay, well, um, metabolism has changed. You know, this could be this could be a true result of a change that you don't even notice, right? So, fifteen pounds is uh, not the end of the world. Um, you're well within our margin for what we consider a healthy. Uh, BMI, which uh, frankly, BMI is becoming less and less important the more medical evidence we get. So I'm not too worried. If it's worrisome for you, of course, we can always talk to a nutritionist. Are you getting exercise? Okay, yeah, that did not. Um, did that happen around the same time you started experiencing symptoms? No? All right. No, 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 no. I, I have no suspicions in that area. And if you don't mind, uh, I do generally take pictures of my patients on every visit as you probably Remember, still a bit stuck in the past when it comes to how I do so. Is it all right if I go ahead and... I, I literally have an iPhone, but there's something about developing film that just helps me relax and, and gives me a sense of accomplishment that I don't get from... Selecting portrait mode here. No, 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 don't, don't smile. If you could just natural expression is fine. Thank you. Let's take a couple more here. Sort of side of the head. Could you could you do me a favor, real quick, if you could? Um, I'd like it if you could just kind of look that way a bit, uh, and then kind of get a profile pic. No, no, other way. There you go. A little more. Can you do a little more? A little bit more. I mean, I want to get a nice profile there. Close. A little bit more perfect. All right. Sort of chin chin out, if you could. Chin out a little bit. Oh, much better. Thank you. I'm going to get in close for one or two of these here. Yeah, 
and portrait mode. Let's get one of that ear. Really sort of a model ear right there. I should do it. Yeah, that's good. If you want to. Perfect. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously these don't, aren't going to help now because I'm going to have to develop them. They're not really diagnostically relevant. It's more, you know, keeping your file as up to date as we possibly can, uh, with as much information as we possibly can. And that includes data, uh, biological samples, uh, as well as, as you might have guessed, you know, um, images. All right. So you can cross that out. Your blood pressure looks good to me. Let's call it 116 over 64. About right. Yeah, so it, it is interesting. You know, I, I do have, you know, my little peccadillos, you might say. Um, modern medicine moves so quickly. And, you know, we have to keep on top of a lot of evolving technologies. And yet I will, you know, develop analog film for fun. What's wrong with me? <laughs> So, based on what I have seen so far, I believe that the cause of your malady is uh, the same as that that I've been seeing sort of over the past couple of months here. But there is a really useful diagnostic test that confirms it uh, to a high degree of pre precision. Um, and that is, you know, part of the wonders of modern medicine. You know, I, this humble space is not only uh, a place where you can be examined, but it's where remedies can be prepared. So um, before we can, you know, administer remedy though we do need the your proof positive diagnostic test so uh, that's what I'd like to do right now if it's all right with you it's a little unorthodox um, you know I will of course not move forward with it without your permission to analyze these as well um, but hear me out that's, that's all I ask. So, as I mentioned, right, there are, ooh, pardon my stomach, there are loads and loads of ways in which technology is pushed in the medical profession. It happens time and time again, and it's incredible. But there are also some things, and when I say this, I say it with you know, a full amount of I shouldn't be using these as emphasis pointers, and yet I am. There are some things that simply uh, do not change. For instance, and for example, let's take the heart. The heart, more or less, uh, when you're when you're doing specialties as you know, medical student, intern, resident, um, and put these in the petri dish. I forget. When you're doing your residency, a lot of people 
look down a bit on things like cardiology. And why? Because the heart is a pump. It's the engine. Um, there's less complexity there and in the view of some doctors, therefore less challenge as far as evolving technologies go on the surface. But when you look deeper, you know, there are things that change and things that stay the same. And there's not necessarily anything more complicated about the human brain than, than the human heart. Um, it's just about like how you choose to look at it. So there are many ways and many areas where well, the advancing of technology almost involves what would appear to some on the outside as stepping backward. I think a very good example of this is uh, currently going on in computing where the idea of mainframes and terminals uh, were outdated by the mid 90s and everyone had a centralized computing power or centralized computing power was kind of seen as a as a as an atavism as everyone got their pcs and scrambled to get the most powerful personal computers they could in their own home and yet in recent years like as we move towards cloud computing really what we're doing is going back to a sort of mainframe terminal kind of structure. The cloud is just a fancy word for um, you know, a mainframe that is not in your home. And it's interesting, I'm sure linguistic professors would have a field day with it when they think about how you can take a word like cloud apply it to something like a centralized database repository where we keep all of your information indefinitely um, and see how many people would click yes on the button if it was, would you like us to keep a centralized repository of all your data in an offsite location that you are not aware of? Or would you like to back up into the cloud I think, I think you'd see different click-through rates using those words. So my point being, sometimes we take so many steps forward and we kind of come full circle. And it is with that uh, preamble that I'd like you to... Uh, what, what's wrong? No, you shouldn't. Please, don't. There's no, there's no reason to... To be no 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 there's no there's no reason no no there's no reason for that are you okay are you all right seems like you're having some trouble feeling faint no okay stay with me stay with me we can do this allow me a moment to explain yeah. before you decide this is this is not for you and it may not be for you but um, I do recommend so these are leeches and they're a very special kind of leech they're bred for this explicit purpose they are sterile or at least they were sterile until I removed the cover of this Petri dish. And if I simply apply them to either side of your face for a few moments, they will collect blood from you. And then I will collect blood from them. Um, now, the reason that we do this is because what they 
let me let me put this in a way that maybe is easier for a lay person to understand. Your blood will react with the leachy antibodies. And once that happens, we collect and analyze those leachy antibodies. And we can determine um, if you indeed are afflicted with uh, the same malady as uh, some of your other uh, contemporary patients who are presenting with the same symptoms based on the reaction with these little guy's blood. There's only one, two, three, four, five, six of them. So three on a side. Uh, they're honestly like kind of cute little buggers. You won't feel a thing. That's one of the wonderful things about this. You won't feel anything. Were I to draw blood from you, you would um, feel some discomfort, of course. Um, so what do you say? Why don't we give it a try? I mean, if you trust me as your physician, I think this is this is the right thing to do. Yeah? Okay. So with that in mind, what I'd like you to do is if you could, just look straight ahead at me. Just straight at me. Okay? And I'm going to pick one of these little fellows up by the tail and apply it. the side of your face there and make sure the sucker is affixed. Go for number two. Just get it right on there. They just, they latch right on. They don't, they don't wait for permission. <laughs> well, this one's a little chunker put that one a little below the other one two three four right there there we go five that's it for this side there Right there. Oh, oh, hang on, little guy. Okay. Oh, save the best one for last. Look at that one. That's quite a, quite a specimen there. That one, huh? Oh yeah, he's gonna be quite diagnostically um, relevant. All right. See, didn't feel anything. Right? When, when they're done, you, you can you can resume. You don't have to uh, not move your head anymore. But once they're done, we can then uh, use this. Oh my, seems stuck. This device. I've I've had this. This was passed down to me from my grandfather. It's quite an old syringe, but you can see the needles themselves, right? The needles are rather um, dull. Uh, that might be a bit painful for you. Uh, the leeches won't feel a thing, I promise. I can't really promise that, but you know, they're leeches. They are not anthropomorphized. And Disney has yet to make a movie featuring leeches on some kind of grand adventure. So I think it's easy for us to, or easier for us to um, divorce ourselves from the idea of a leech as something that we really need to feel much sympathy for. So we just need to give that uh, a couple of minutes. I'm gonna retrieve my laptop um, and write down some just small things that I need to take note of. Um, you'll notice I have a notebook and I have 
a laptop. Um, there are some things you just need, you need a database for, right? And some things you don't. And when you don't need a database, I'd personally rather not use it. I'd rather write it down here. Okay. Next we'll get over here. Don't mind. I'll, I'll kind of come over here close to you. I want to see how these. Could you look down just a little bit more? little bit. Yeah. Good. Yeah, I just kind of, I want to see how the leeches are, are taking. They look like they're, they're doing their job all right. Okay. Give them another minute or two. And while that happens, I will, you can, you can look back up if you like. I mean, if you like, you know, you can look wherever you want. Yeah. Your, your swivel head is free to go wherever you think it should go. Password. Sure you right off the bat that this test comes back positive um, it's a simple simple treatment that we can cook up for you right here what is it well let's not get ahead of ourselves Make sure the diagnosis is correct before we uh, go jumping to any conclusions. All right. Okay. Good. Okay. And now I will take the. Excuse me. little buggers from your face and I will put them back in the petri dish where I will be able to do with them as I please. All right. Now if you could again just uh, look sort of straight ahead. Uh, that's fine maybe up a bit. There you go. And I will remove them one by one. Here we go. There's a oh, you can see that one I had quite a lunch. Now there's like some slight marks on the side of your face. Um, that will go away within a day or two. I can tell he's happier. Three. These chubby little fellas. Oh, this one must have been near a bank of capillaries because it really feasted. Two, three, four, five. Um. Five. I'm almost certain that I applied six. Am I incorrect in 
Thank you, man. One, two, three, four, five. Did you uh, did you get up or or move around when I didn't notice by any chance? Huh. Okay. Well, we're a leech short. Um, not the end of the world, certainly that's enough leech to do the diagnostic procedure. Um, however, when you get home, you might want to take a good look in a full length mirror, see where that last one got off to. I don't, I don't see it anywhere. Um, I don't really want to subject you to a to a full search. They're fine, you know. They're they're not gonna. They can't possibly take so much blood that they're gonna cause any problems for you, especially one. Um, I will say that they prefer to be where it is uh, sort of warmer and, and darker. Maybe use that as a a way of determining where where to look when you do your search. Um, I apologize. They, you wouldn't think they could move very quickly, but because uh, they are sly little buggers when they want to be. Okay. There we go. Got our, our tray full of nice, fat, fully blood fed leeches. Your blood is currently doing its bloody work uh, within them. You can actually, if you look closely, you can see the blood coursing through them. Um, I'm just gonna stab one of these little buggers. And now we need to take this blood. Dispense it in a small little flask. And repeat for a couple more of them. Let's see, so I don't think we got this this fat one here. Let's get that one. Yeah. Good. Good. The nice thing about drawing blood from these leeches is you don't really have to worry about hitting anything of any critical importance. A couple more here, this one. Oh, I just put that in my coffee. I have to remember not to drink that. Luckily, we have one more. We probably could have done with four. It's always good to have extra, even if it means you know, sometimes they get away. There we go. Let's swirl this around. And I'm going to Head on over to the area of my office where we can actually perform tests and concoct remedies. So we have to mix this blood uh, that has been in the bodies of 
the leeches with a, a couple of reagents and then you just observe it under a microscope. And then we're good to go. Oh, that one's kind of tough to... Now I'm going to head over uh, to the microscope that I had. Actually, you know what? Why don't I, why don't I bring it to you? That seems like a good idea. Okay. You don't, I think. You don't need the, the light source, so. We can just do this on our table right here. And we'll sip that. Ooh, that coffee tastes weird. Getting a little crowded here on our tray. Okay, turn this so we can see it. Let's plug it in. Just, you never know. It's always good to, you know, just in case you want to be able to see really well. Oh, what is this? There's something already on the, the tray of our microscope. Um, I think this might be the remnants of a, of a labioplasty. I'm not, that's the problem when you, you share an office. I, I don't, this needs to go in the biohazard container. Excuse me. Very embarrassing and, and not professional at all, if I might add. Terrible. All right. Sorry about that. A thousand apologies. All right. Now we can simply sign this up. Apply a drop or two. Perfect. Let's, let's plug this in and, and, and click it on just for the sake of being, you know, thorough. Click you on and take a look. Interesting. Okay. Hmm. I was not expecting water bears. Fascinating. Okay. There we go. Yes. That's all we needed there was the um, positive indicator marker of what it is that you have. And yes, it is exactly what uh, I've had maybe three or four other people come in over the past, I want to say month, month and a half, 
Um, you're suffering from what the French call ennui, and what we call here in the States, ennui. Sometimes ennui, sometimes ennui. Uh, basically the same, just horribly mispronounced. Luckily, there is a, a very easy remedy for this affliction, which I know feels horrible and accounts for a lot of symptoms that you've shown. And I can whip that up for you right here in my little, let's call it a pharmacopoeia. If you'd like, you can, you can come watch. That might be fun. Yeah? Okay, come on over. So, you can see what we have here is absolutely a, a pharmacopoeia of all kinds of different chemicals, reagents, ways to combine said chemicals and reagents. What we need to do is simply take uh, a little bit of, I'm going to say a little bit of, a little bit of Zoloft. Maybe, yes, some rubellium silicus. Just a, just a bit. Some good old fashioned, where is my good old fashioned? Yeast, some good old fashioned yeast. everywhere. <laughs> and normally I might recommend some ground uh, tooth enamel, uh, but I think we're, we're okay without that for this particular concoction. So take that and I'm just gonna grind it all up. Takes a, takes a bit of elbow grease, I can tell you. Oh boy, that yeast, that yeast goes everywhere. Now, I'm not gonna lie to you, the main active ingredient here is the Zoloft. And one might argue that I could just give you just the Zoloft, but um, I couldn't, charge in the same sort of scaling way that I'd like to if I just gave you the Zoloft. So therefore I need to, I need to add one or two other things to it so that I can call it my own as it were. Uh, and then therefore not feel guilty about charging you. Uh, what I'll be charging you. And I also know that sounds a little bit chunky, but what we're going to do now is we're going to dilute that in, let's say, some coffee. And you can take that coffee and be on your way, and you'll feel much better within, oh, I don't know, 30 minutes, 60 minutes to an hour. And you may find that after a day or two, you're no longer feeling so great. And you just come back. That's all. I right. can't help but notice that you're standing on the scale. Um, is there a reason you're standing on the scale? I don't think it's going to change the weight outcome 
But in time with this medication, I think you'll find that uh, it will resolve itself. So let me put this in a little bottle for you. Got any empties here? I'll grab an empty and I'll, I'll, I'll meet you back up at the, uh, near the back of the office, okay? All right, grab one. I'll be right back. You, you stay right here and I will go and grab a bottle for you. I realize I asked you to both stay right here and return to the back of the office. Let's say return to the back of the office. And just like that, uh, hey presto, we're right back where we should be. I can shut off my microscope now and here we go. The concoction that I will send you on your way with. I know it looks a bit like a hairball suspended in water, but I can guarantee you it's it's going to do the job. Let me give our friend, our little leech friends, put them back inside their home. They can stay like that for an indefinite period. Amazing creatures, leeches. Yeah. Of course, nowhere near as amazing as humans, but uh, you know, somebody's got to be a number one, right? So you take your medication. And I recommend sort of swallowing it with something, with some flavor, perhaps a, a shot or two of vodka, or of vodka, shot or two of vodka, not or vodka. That doesn't make any sense. A shot or two of vodka, gin if you must. If you use rum, I'm afraid I might have to commit you. And that should rid you of your ennui uh, for some amount of time. I, I don't really know how much time off the top of my head, but um, that's going to be part of the data that, that we end up collecting is how well does this work for you and for how long. So I'm glad that I could help you. Uh, again, it's an amazing, amazing world that we're living in right now. Technology. So um, you're welcome. And also thank you for uh, feeding my pets. Uh, now I, I promise you, you know, the need for me to feed the leeches human blood at least once or twice a day has no bearing at all on me choosing uh, a diagnostic method. It's strictly scientific. And you can tell because I have a stethoscope and a, and a tie, and a clipboard, and a microscope, and you don't. So, deal with it. And, and also, you know, I, I, I really hope you feel better. Go ahead, take that if you want. Okay, you can take it. Okay. Right. I would wait. Maybe, here's what I would do if I were you. Take a warm bath, go home, take a warm bath, check yourself for the errant slug. If you're inclined to return the slug to me, that'd be great. If not, I would, I don't advise cutting it into pieces. They just regrow and then you'll have an entire um, lunch of leeches. Now that's, that's the word for a group of leeches. It doesn't mean you're supposed to actually eat them as if they were lunch. It's like, you know, a murder of crows, right? A lunch of leeches. So the um, best thing I could think of to do is, is ironically, you know, put some salt on it, a good amount, you know, as if you were salting popcorn. Um, keep doing it until you hear the fizzing stop. And 
that should be fine. Then dispose of it. Hmm. No, not in your garbage. You're going to want to put it in a plastic bag. Um, maybe double bag it and then, you know, throw it away and maybe in, you, well, I guess you could now, it's a biohazard. <sighs> Bury it. That's what I think you should do. Bury it. And maybe bury the memory of burying it. And then, you know, while you're in your bath, take, take your medication. And I notice you looking at it in puzzlement and yeah, it's not pleasant, and, yeah, but you got to take it all. You definitely don't let it come back up and chase it with whatever. And by the time you're done with your bath, you know, uh, depending on where you found the slug, you know, you should feel fantastic. Um, and you could go online, please, and leave some feedback. That'd be great, too. We often get patients through word of mouth. And honestly, like, I feel like these leeches are just constantly hungry. So, um, so especially if you have people with symptoms similar to yours, you know, have a friend, you could recommend them to me. I would appreciate it. All right. Well, I'm going to go. Uh, you can take a moment here, sort of get yourself uh, prepped to leave and um, just check in with the front desk on your way out. And I'll see you Maybe in 48 hours, maybe in six months, you know, it's up to you. All right, take care.